Hello everyone, my name is Ahmed Gunayn. I'm the Director of Undergraduate Studies at Brunel Business School. On behalf of all my colleagues, I'd like to welcome you to this induction video for your Level 3 studies. Uh, hello everybody and uh, welcome back to Brunel. I hope you'll enjoy your final year at Brunel Business School. My name is Dr. Afshin Mansouri. I'm Pathway Leader for Business and Management General Pathway and I'm also module leader for your final year project, uh, MG3119. I'm going to talk a bit about the options you'll have in the final year and some tips and quick advice about final year project. As you know, in the final year of your studies at Brunel, you have a number of options. And for the general pathway, there are four modules from which you will need to pick two. Uh, you can choose either modules on gender and organizations if you're interested in exploring the differences, similarities between female and male uh, workers in the workplace. You can choose entrepreneurship and small business venture if you're interested to explore possibility of setting up a business for yourself. It's a very good module for that perspective. Uh, international marketing will give you an opportunity to consolidate your knowledge and skill in marketing if you're thinking to go for a job in marketing. And innovation and knowledge management will give you a broad perspective to managing knowledge in organizations. So depending on where you want to go, which for general pathway students is a very wide spectrum. You can work in literally any organizations. Our graduates in previous years are now working in a very wide range of organizations from manufacturing companies, service organizations, financial service providers, and so on and so forth. A number of them have set up their own business. So you can think of literally any organization that you want because each organization has something to do with management, with business, and interaction with the external world. One of the main modules that you will be undertaking in the final year is your final year project, which is a very good opportunity to consolidate your theoretical background and examine a real case, a real issue, a relevant issue to any topic related to business and management, ideally uh, for a known company or a known organization and to uh, develop a piece of research under the guidance of a personal supervisor. I'll be delivering the uh, lectures on research methods and you'll be working with your personal tutor to develop your final year project. It's a very good opportunity for you to become independent learners. Whatever you have learned during your studies at Brunel, will become obsolete sooner or later. So you will need to be able to update yourself and keep yourself updated in terms of the knowledge and skills which are required to respond to future challenges. In 20 years, 30 years, you don't know what is going to uh, be introduced in the market. 20 years ago, probably uh, very little people had heard about internet or smartphones or apps, but nowadays, these are very common in the business environment. So as long as you're able to learn and acquire new knowledge and skills, you should be fine in the job market for hopefully the rest of your career. And the final year project will give you the opportunity to acquire this very critical knowledge, to be independent learners and hopefully successful graduates in the market. As you all know, this is the most important year of your studies. This equates to two-thirds of your degree classification. And one very important module is the FYP, the final year project. And this accounts for 40 credits. It's not just because of the credits, but this will shape your personality depending on the topic that you decide upon. So you have to really carefully think about what you'll be really focusing on. When you're starting, your career and you're applying for jobs, 
people look at your CV and one thing they try to pick up is what is your area of interest and what might be your specialization, what might you be good at. And one highlight in the CV is usually your final year project. And I've seen so many students who came back and have indicated that they've got interviews or got jobs based on their final year project topic. So starting with the topic is very important. Students think, and this is not a tip, that the more research methods or techniques you use, the higher grade you'll get. It's not correct. You need to show us that you can match the right method to the right research question. When it comes to the methodology, it's about choosing the right technique to collect the data. And you'll have lots of techniques. Some of them are related to quantitative methods or qualitative methods. Some students will use a mixture of both. And again, it depends on what you're trying to find out. It's not about, oh, I like quantitative research methods, or I hate numbers. It's about what is your research question and what is the best way to answer it. Okay, so don't force yourself, otherwise it's not going to work. When you write the literature review, the word critical is something that we really emphasize on. It's not about summarizing what other people said, but trying to make sense of what this summary means, to give yourself and us a direction, or to highlight that there is a problem that needs to be researched, the importance and the validity of your topic. So it's a way of you communicating how you have managed to think about the knowledge or the information that you have read, not just to summarize it, and let us or your final year tutors you know, try to dig out what does it mean then. So the question I always ask my tutees actually is, so what when I read four pages? So what? You have to be critical. So always remember being critical is important and it's key to the literature review. A common mistake, and I have to refer to it as a mistake, that some of the students do, although by now, having submitted lots of coursework, you should know by now what is the definition of plagiarism. But it's mainly when you copy and paste a bulk of text from any article or any source without referring to it. The norm would be always to paraphrase. When I say paraphrase, is actually now trying to understand what this paragraph is trying to say and to rewrite it in your own words, to fit your context as well. But if you think that there is definition or this sentence cannot be rewritten in any other form, then you have to put it in quotes and to refer to the actual individual or academic who wrote this. Failure to do so, then you're actually plagiarizing your work. When you write the analysis, it's very important to try to make some sense out of it. Some students will try to show lots of tables, lots of um, summaries again, but in reality, until you compare or contrast the results that you have managed to get from your data to the body of literature and to show how you have managed to either sort the problem or maybe shed some light on a specific problem, we will not be able to see what's the difference between your outcome and what we already knew. So that's what we call a discussion. Discussion is just the ending part of your final year project. And you're trying to discuss your results within the existing body of knowledge, within what we already know. So you can show that I have added another brick to the wall. You're not trying to sort out the problem of the world, but you're trying to help maybe understand the problem further or look at the problem from a different angle. Okay. And once you do that, you just have your concluding section. And here you go. That's the FYP. We are members of the student support team. Um, uh, we've been working together on student support for at least three years together now, yes. if not considerably longer. We both have many, many years of experience with student support. Um, we're academics, uh, part of the small team of BBS student support. Um, and whilst 99% of your queries um, about your studies can be dealt with by the Academic Programmes Office, as I'm sure you've um, uh, experienced yourself, um, we in BBS Student Support um, can deal with some slightly different things. Normally, um, things associated with um, problems or issues around mitigating circumstances.
Yes, what we like to tell students actually is that everything that happens in your life, in human life, around the world, happens to students as well. And that's when we come in to help you with university procedures, university practices, and what can be done, okay, what can be done to help you. But it can also be good things as well. We, we've had several babies this year um, that have been born. We've had Olympic athletes we have. Um, who've had to go off and, and do their training or, or do something like that. That's also a mitigating circumstance. Um, so mitigating circumstances doesn't have to be, you know, all the bad things that happen to us in life. If you look in the handbook, it says, you know, very often students leave it to, to too late to talk to us. If it's after the event, after the examination, after the coursework, and then you tell us that something's gone wrong or you just had a baby or something good, um, then it's sort of too late for us to, to put into place anything to help you with that. Whereas if we know beforehand, then we can discuss how might we um, do things differently or how might we help you. So that might be an extension, for example. So do get in contact, do look in the student handbook uh, for all the information that you need. Hello, my name is Rupi Daliwal and I'm the Senior Programmes Administrator at the Brunel Business School. My role is to look after all the Tier 4 visa students that the school has. So what does that mean? Well, as a Tier 4 visa student, you are required by the University's Tier 4 visa policy and the UK VI to meet a minimum of 10 engagement points throughout each academic year. You can find the Level 3 Tier 4 engagement model on Blackboard Learn in the APO section under Tier 4. Failure to meet these engagement points can put your visa at risk. As you can see from the engagement model, most of your engagement points consist of you submitting assignments or attending exams. However, you will need to sign a student declaration form and submit it to the APO, the Academics Programmes Office at the Eastern Gateway Building at the beginning of the term. This is an agreement between yourself and us to say that you have read and understood your obligations throughout the academic year. The other form that you're required to submit is a confirmation of attendance form, a CAF form. You'll need to submit this once in Term 1 and once in Term 2. To submit the CAF form correctly, you will need to approach one of your lecturers during their office hours and ask them to complete the form for you. And once it's been signed off, submit it to the APO. For Term 1 for this year, the submission date for a CAF form is the 7th of November. You should submit or contact myself to explain why you haven't met this deadline before the 7th of November. However, throughout the academic year, we will regularly send you reminders of any forms that may be due. We'll do this by emailing you at your Brunel email address, so please ensure that you check your email address regularly. What's not acceptable in a CAF is to type your name and your supervisor's name and submit it as electronically. The signature of your supervisor or your lecturer must be in pen, so we must know that you have met your supervisor face to face. The reason for this is we encourage you to talk to your lecturers and we hope that if there are any issues or problems or anything you're unsure of, you can raise it during this meeting. So hopefully there are benefits on both sides. Please ensure that you check your emails regularly, as if you do miss one of the engagement points, you do put your visa at risk and risk yourself being deregistered from the university, and that's something we don't want happening to anybody. If you're in doubt or unsure about anything, please contact me via my email address or come and see me face to face at the APO. Thank you. I'm Professor Vishant Virakkodi and I'm the director of the Business Life program. Welcome to all the final year students, both direct level three students and those who are returning from placements into their final year. Now, what is in your mind at the moment? You want to graduate with a good degree and also you are thinking about employment 10 months from now. This is the most important decision of your life, which careers you're going to go into, how much you're going to earn, and what lifestyles you're going to have. And how do you prepare for that? Well, we have a program called Business Life, which is about employability, and it is about preparing students for those jobs that are the most desirable in the marketplace at the moment.
business life is uh, focused on developing those essential and core employability attributes or graduate attributes that are that employers are actually looking for in graduates you will be well aware that thousands of graduates graduate every year and when you will be graduating next year you will face the same competition from all over the UK from different universities and also from across the globe so how do you distinguish yourselves as these, those graduates that have those desirable skills? Now what Business Life will do is help you to engage in a series of activities, workshops, seminars, problem solving uh, seminars, case studies, um, listen to leading experts from industry, participate in tours to leading organizations, engage in applied skills such as Sage Accounting, um, computer driving license, um, learn about PowerPoint, Excel, Microsoft Word. How do you use these skills professionally in a business environment? Um, other examples include project management, um, SAS, which is a new data analytics tool that is being uh, taking industry by storm and people are looking for experts who are able to analyze big data. What the Business Life program does is we provide all of those skills to ensure that our graduates, our business school graduates, will be employable and desirable to the leading employers in the UK. I'm Alexander Sedgwick and I'm the Level 1 and Work Placement Administrator within the Business School, now the College of Business, Social Sciences and Arts. And yes, I, I deal with uh, student inquiries at the front desk over the phone and via email on a day-to-day -day basis. And I'm here to help and support students, um, whatever their needs are. The Placement Buddy Scheme is it's designed um, to get Level 2 students um, who are looking to get a work placement um, to speak with and dialogue with uh, Level 3 students that have just recently come back from work placement. And the idea is that they share their knowledge, um, hard-earned knowledge, that they've gathered from getting that placement and sharing it with those students that are looking for a work placement. We do set it up so that we've got students that are on the same pathway. So the idea there is that students who have sector specific knowledge can share that information with the students that are obviously studying on that pathway, um, be it international business, marketing, or just general business and management. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's the idea and um, that's the, the support there is, is between Level 2 and students that have been out on placement Level 3. So we're looking for students that know what it's like, know how hard it can be to secure a placement and would like to help those students that, that are basically going to be in the position that they were in um, a couple of years ago and we want people that can share that knowledge and and help in any way possible. Okay, you know how important a work placement is for your studies, for your CV, and for your transcript at the end of your studies. So we would like you to share that with Level 2 students that are looking to get a work placement and support them in any way possible um, through the process of application forms, interviews, everything that is involved in applying for a work placement. Well, the benefits being a buddy should be the satisfaction you should get from helping um, a level two student get that placement, along with the fact that you get to network with your fellow students and find out exactly what they're doing in terms of their studies and how they're getting on in that work placement throughout the course once they've secured it. And I think throughout that time, it should be a very satisfying process for both you and the student and should benefit you for the future once, you, once you're a graduate. 
Now, if you're interested and you want to get in contact, please do. And you can get in contact with myself, Alexander Sedgwick. That's through email, phone, and face-to-face. -face. So if you want to email me, I'm on alexander.sedgwick at brunel.ac.uk or over the phone on 01895 267 521 or face to face within the academic programs office which is on the ground floor of the Eastern Gateway building room 008